What's going on everyone, my name's Tenebris Infinite, and today I'm going to tell you dudes 10 tips and tricks for Phoenix bases. Easily one of the most massive, repeatable activities we've gotten so far in Generation Zero's runtime. Offering brand new gameplay metas, emergent gameplay, and best of all, infinite amounts of loot and experience. Today, I'm going to run you through a bunch of tips to help you through these bases, get more of them in the process, how to deal with the deadliest threat these bases offer, and how to get obscene amounts of control points and just so much more. Real quick before we get into these tips and tricks, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video, it goes a huge way in supporting the channel, much further than you might think. So let's start off with the big one, the mistake we all made when these first launched. Don't destroy your first naturally generated Phoenix base. They are worth so much more to you in your world than the control points that they offer. Leaving your Phoenix bases allows you to not only level them up to get better rewards from them, but offer limitless sources of loot and experience alongside region score and the whole nine miles. There is a pre-made Phoenix base with the Good News mission, but after that you'll find more Phoenix bases at each of the region's control points. These generate as you kill machines. They'll generate once you hit max region score as well. They work on a similar system to the base defense system, where as you kill machines and come out of combat, there's a chance for them to spawn. Once you have one, you're good to go, and you can even grind that Phoenix base itself using what we'll talk about next to get it all the way up to max level. As of right now, the system doesn't work entirely properly for everyone, hopefully we'll get a fix for that soon, but when it is back up and running, you'll still absolutely want to leave these Phoenix bases for farming more than taking the control point. Now for this next tip, it's one I'm really stoked to talk about with you dudes. A brand new use for the remote hacking skill. If you have this skill, you can hack your way through Phoenix doors and get full access to the entire base, saving your rockets for farming machines and giving you easy access to taking down wall turrets. The rooms that generate in Phoenix bases are randomly distributed with either proximity mines, the shield generators, lootables, EMP nodes that you can set off to stun machines, and the most important of all, machine spawners themselves. Blasting your way into a room can sometimes destroy either the lootables or spawners that you'll be wanting to go after as you do multiple runs through your Phoenix bases. All you need is one skill point put into the remote hacking skill in order to be able to hack through these doors. But say you don't have remote hacking, but still want to either cleanly go through a base or just want to save on explosives. And shoutouts to Carney for thinking this one up first. All you need to do is shoot a gun off a doggo and get it to follow you and your newfound pet doggo will open all the doors in the Phoenix base for you. This can be even more useful than the hacking perk as you don't always have a door access to hack. Getting your doggo to try to melee is a quick and direct way of opening the door that you want to open. With doors covered, let's talk about some fun ways to get through walls here in these base assaults. One great way are pre-built structures. We talked about these in our base location ranking video from last week, and these are legitimately the MVPs of base defense and assault. Phoenix walls can't generate over pre-builds, so you can use these to get quick and easy access into your Phoenix base completely incognito. Or, if you're looking for another method of getting in or out, Look for the red fuel cells on walls. These will be the quickest method of getting through Phoenix walls without draining a ton of resources. Once you're inside the walls of the Phoenix base, you'll get much better vantage points to take down wall turrets pain-free. If you're going to use explosive weapons, your best bet for resources and time are RPGs from the RLG. Thumper grenades are cheap, but don't have the punch of the RPGs, and the GRG, even with the experimental variant, is still outdamaged by our Soviet tank buster. And lastly, this is a kind of luck of the draw scenario, but since these Phoenix bases are procedurally generated, you can find gaps in the walls, especially at corners and pylons. 
Now next up, scouting and hit and runs. So, in order to farm these Phoenix control points successfully, take down the turrets, stay alive, all while leaving the lootables and spawners in the process, you'll maybe want to do some early recon and guerrilla style hit and runs. Have runs where you focus on learning the layout, then a run taking down turrets, maybe opening up some pathways. Then after that, the Phoenix base is yours to plunder. Farm a bazillion machines to get your steel supply under stock, or medkits, or whatever you might seek from runners, hunters, and seekers. When you scout out a place, you can also get a good idea of where the shield generators are, which, if you're going for the control point takedown, can really make things a much smoother process. The shield gens glow with a red light before you get to the base, but when you start the assault, they kind of stop glowing. So using some early recon scouting can help you know where you need to go for the most part when you're taking down the base or maybe setting up some easy farming. Also, these turrets can really hurt you if you don't pay attention, and sometimes the accumulated chaos of taking down a phoenix base in one go might cost you adrenaline or a ton of medkits, so this kind of makes taking the base a much more bite-sized process. Now, let's talk about wall turrets for a quick second. Wall turrets are freaking deadly, man, so being able to take them down efficiently is a huge deal. You can always launch an RPG at them, but sometimes a better, less costly approach is to head behind the turret and destroy its fuel cell. This one-shots the turret on destruction and is great for if you're trying to be stealthy when taking down these bases. But not only are the wall turrets deadly to you, you can also use them against ally machines. When a wall turret has a shockwave emitter built into it, you can use this shockwave to damage and even destroy other machines. This is very useful for farming as you essentially get a free method of destroying all the machines around it, giving them a taste of their own medicine in the process. And if you're lucky, this free loot real estate can be beside a spawner, giving you infinite loot of whatever machine spawns near it. The spawners won't take damage from the shockwave, as they're not technically machines, more like structures, allowing you to just take down the machines that spawn in around it. And for a fun freebie here, you can shoot the floodlights off walls to distract enemies and draw them over in a stealthy way. Now for the real hidden gem of Phoenix Control Points, Machine Spawners. You have three variants, blue, red, and purple. Blue spawns hunters, purple spawns runners, and red spawns seekers at this point, and will spawn them infinitely. And I mean infinitely, dudes. They'll straight up spawn until your bullets run out, and it is glorious. Now, you need one of those multi-vision mods? Farm Seekers for a bit from your Phoenix base. A weapon drop from a hunter? Bang, there you go. Need to finish up any machine killing challenges? You're set. This is seriously so massive for Generation Zero, and I can't wait to see what big machine spawners will look like in the future. We'll have more to talk on these guys in a later video, but for now, make sure you use these to the fullest. They're the best part of base assaults at this point in time outside the victory rewards. Again, blue for hunters, purple for runners, red for seekers. That way you can know which kind you want to maybe keep around uh, as you're doing your farming. And we're going to also have a separate video on how to set up your Phoenix bases into an infinite machine spawning mob farm. So uh, wait for that, that's gonna be sick. Let's change things up here for a quick second from the in-depth stuff for a simple but efficient stealth tip. Before you start taking down the Phoenix base, group machines and get them away from the base with lures. So that's boomboxes, radios, or the comms arrays that you get from Seekers. It's quick, and using a few of them, you can really lure the machines away from the base, giving you a short window before new machines spawn to take down wall turrets, shield gens, or loot as much as you can. Speaking of loot, there are two types of lootables in Phoenix bases to look out for, grey hatches and red hatches. They offer the same loot as harvester drop pods, so they can offer a wide variety of loot from tough to farm things like radios to med kits and ammo boxes. 
these are really fun to loot and I'm hoping that someday maybe we'll have like a third tier of hatches that will offer like really, really good loot, but maybe will be a very rare spawn uh, in these bases. Now, this second last tip here is possibly the biggest one. How to reset your Phoenix bases for repeat assaults. This is how you take things that are finite in the base, like the loot hatches, and make them infinite. All you have to do is simply QTM or quit to menu whenever you're feeling up to it before destroying the command center. Jump back into the game and boom, the Phoenix base will be reset, allowing you to essentially fight these bases over and over, generating infinite region score and everything else the Phoenix outpost has to offer. This feels like it's kind of a placeholder scenario where we might see the system changed as we go on, but for now, if you have one Phoenix base, you have infinite base assaults you can do. There is the caveat of having a Phoenix base to get started with, but again, hopefully that'll be fixed for us soon. And this last one is a tip to get infinite control points. Now, as it stands in Generation Zero, the easiest way to generate more Phoenix control points is to have a Phoenix control point and then generate other ones from that point. Uh, but one of the big benefits is that you could jump into multiplayer with your buddies, farm up these control points, all of you, and wind up getting tons and tons of control points. Uh, all of the players in the session are awarded with control points on completion of the Phoenix control point. So you can use this to basically get infinite control points. As with most things in Generation Zero, it's more powerful the more players you have uh, to be able to engage with the activity in. Uh, so, again, if you have, like, maybe a crew of, like, one or two homies that you play this game with, get them to generate control points as you generate control points. Go around as a squad, take them all down, and you'll all wind up benefiting heavily from doing so. All right, so there we go, 10 tips and tricks for Phoenix bases, plus a few bonuses along the way. I seriously hope this will help you dudes, if not now, then in the future when we have base assaults running smoothly for everyone. But I don't want to take up too much of your time here with the outro, so I just want to say thank you for watching, my dudes. Stay awesome, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.